Well, good evening, friends. Uh, welcome to this edition of Virtual Vespers here in our CMC in the gym. Uh, we're coming to you here this evening because this is where we will be meeting in person uh, this coming Sunday, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, there we go. We had a little bit of echo, but we're good now. Um, so I don't know what all you can see uh, through there, but Chris has got the cameras ready and going. This is our, uh, how we have it set up. We'll be set up here on the stage, and when you come in Sunday morning, uh, there will be some chairs put in some different places. Uh, our, our idea is that we'll have them uh, located enough to where uh, households can sit together and still be socially distanced maybe from another individual or households and that sort of thing. Uh, we'll iron out those things uh, when the day comes. But before we get started uh, this evening, as it will be a little bit different, uh, I want us to begin our time together with a word of prayer. So would you pray with me? Holy God, we are thankful for an opportunity to be together, to pray with one another, to spend a little time reflecting, to or look forward to a time when we can be back together, if even in a slightly different way in this space. And God, we're thankful that we have this space, Lord, that we can use, a time when we can gather. We pray your blessings on it even now as we look forward to it. And we pray your blessings on this time we share together. In Christ's name, amen. So I want to talk to you really tonight uh, about three things uh, that have happened uh, in, in recent days. And the first one, uh, I just want to go ahead and kind of get out of the way. If you don't know by now, uh, this past weekend, uh, I sent an email and posted uh, on this website or on this Facebook page uh, a letter outlining my resignation. Uh, this past weekend, we were in... Wilson, North Carolina, where I preached in a uh, live-streamed service in view of a call for the congregation there. Following that service, there was a drive-through vote, and when the votes were tallied some couple of hours later, the congregation had overwhelmingly voted to call me as their next pastor. So I want to uh, just share with you a couple of things as we think about going forward. First of all, um, my last day, my last Sunday here at Williams as your pastor will be June 21st. So I'll be here this Sunday, the next Sunday, and the Sunday after. Uh, I plan to be here in the pulpit to preach. Uh, I'm working on a, a short series of sermons uh, that I think help sort of express my uh, thankfulness for you, but also uh, maybe challenge us both as we continue on uh, in new chapters of ministry together. So I'll be in this pulpit those three Sundays, provided nothing else uh, happens uh, with COVID-19 or anything else. And we will continue on the intervening Wednesday evenings to come to you this way uh, through virtual Vespers, whether it's here in the gym or as I've been doing in my office or in other parts uh, of the building. Uh, when I, what that means for the rest of that time is I will be in and out of the office over these next few weeks as I'm packing books, uh, preparing uh, uh, things and that sort of stuff. So you'll, you may see my car uh, in the parking lot. You may not. I may be at home uh, uh, packing there, uh, being with the boys. I may be here packing the office or, or doing some other stuff. So uh, just know uh, I'm around. I'll, I'll be around. And, and, and what I, I want to say to you in that capacity is I am continuing as your pastor until June 21st. Uh, there, there's no letting off the gas. There's no coasting to the end I'm still called to be here through that time, and I will be. I'm your pastor till that day comes. So you have a need, you have uh, something that's on your mind, someone to pray with you, don't hesitate uh, to reach out to me. Now, another thing, the second thing I want to talk to you about is what we will look forward to this Sunday. This Sunday, uh, we, we're going to have a go. We're going we're to give a go at returning to a modified service of in-person worship. Now, I've changed my language about this a little bit. Um, a lot of people have been saying we're reopening. Uh, the church was never closed. We're just coming back together for in-person worship. And by now, you should have received a lot of information uh, either by email or, or through uh, conversations with your deacon and other people in the church 
about what that's going to look like to return into this room for in-person worship. Um, first, one of the things that should have happened by now, or maybe before Sunday, is that you should have been contacted by your family's deacon, uh, just sort of taking a soft survey about, will you be here at 9 o'clock or 10.30? The last time I met with the deacons, uh, it seemed that a, a majority of people wanted to come to the 9 o'clock service, and that's great. But we can't all be here at 9 o'clock, so if you're at home uh, thinking, well, I, I can make it to 10.30, I, I could do with sleeping in a little bit longer, maybe have that second Pop-Tart, whatever, uh, then yeah, yeah, come at 10.30. We'll welcome you here. It will be the same uh, order of worship, just at a different time. Uh, another thing I want to make you aware of is we will have uh, face masks, face coverings for anybody uh, who comes and would like to use uh, those. Now, hear me say this. I, I'm encouraging that you wear them because, one, it, it helps everyone else maybe feel a little bit more at ease to come. But also hear me say, maybe you're, you say, Chris, I just don't, I don't want to wear one. I, I, you know, maybe you have some sort of anxiety about putting one on, makes you breathe a little differently. Maybe you just don't want to wear a mask. Come anyway, provided uh, you're not sick, you don't fall into those sort of categories outlined by the CDC. I'm sure you've known by now uh, about being at risk and those sorts of things. The primary reason uh, any of us wear a mask or a face covering, again, is to, to just sort of protect others in case we are an asymptomatic carrier of this virus. So uh, I say all that to say we have 1,800 masks. We were donated a case of masks. If you need one and don't have one, do not be afraid to ask for one uh, when you come to church here. We'll have hand sanitizers uh, at the door uh, for you to use as you come in and out. But by all means, if you have your own little bottle of it you like to carry with you, bring it on. Just come bring along that with you. A lot's going to look different, a lot's going to feel different, but that's okay. We're, we're taking very gradual and intentional steps about returning to worship when we're able, when, when there's a, a safe enough feeling that we're not putting anyone at harm or at any more harm than we normally would. So well, some of the ways, just to give you a heads up about what that may look like, there'll be no hymnals, uh, no pew Bibles, bring your own Bible, which I hope you do anyway, but if you don't, you know, bring your own Bible. Um, and, and at least for this first Sunday, no bulletins. We're still sort of figuring that out. Uh, so just be, uh, be aware of that. Of course, the seating is going to look different. The timing will be different. Uh, singing will be very limited, if at all. And, and by very limited, I mean uh, we're, when we get in this room, we'll observe how spaced out we are, uh, spaced out, you know what I mean, how far apart we are from one another, uh, who may be covering their face, these sorts of things, uh, because we're following really closely, or I'm following really closely, a lot of the information that's coming out about singing in relation uh, to the COVID-19. My biggest thing I want to tell you, though, is just be, be patient uh, it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of wrinkles we're ironing out, especially as we look past the next three weeks of what services will look like. Um, there's going to be a lot of maybe awkward time, a lot of, uh, okay, well, what are we doing now? Uh, who's going this time? But, but that's to be expected, is this is all new for all of us. So I ask for your prayers, for those of us leading worship, and again, just for your patience when you're here and in this space to rejoin us again for worship. Another thing I really want to tell you about when it comes to our rejoining one another for worship is the sort of slogan that I've sort of adopted for this. When in doubt, sit it out. If you wake up Sunday morning and you say, I just don't know, I haven't really felt good, or, or I just don't know if, if I need to be around uh, a lot of people at one time, if, if you fall into any of those categories that have been outlined and you think, I don't know, and maybe it's too soon. Or If you have any doubt whatsoever, just stay home. We are live streaming. Chris has done a fantastic job, as he always does, setting up things here so that we can be able to live stream this service on Facebook and then post it later on YouTube and all of our uh, video channels, Facebook, YouTube, those sorts of things. So when in doubt, sit it out, stay at home. You'll be able to join us this way. If you can't join us, 
via live stream. I'm not really sure how you're watching this, but if you are and you can't uh, uh, join us Sunday morning by that, let us know. We'll find a way to get you a recording. We'll find a way to do what we can so that m as many people as possible can join us together again for worship. And now the, the third and last thing I, I wanted to talk to you about was just all the events uh, of this past week, week and a half that we've all uh, been, been witness to. A lot has happened. I have friends all over the country in major cities and small cities, small towns, and some of the stories have been moving and powerful. Some have been scary. Some have been riddled with uncertainty. From friends of friends who've been shot by rubber bullets in Minneapolis to friends who've peacefully gathered with other ministers standing on the steps of a local courthouse to propose new legislation against hate crimes. I, I've seen a lot in this last week. A lot has happened. Peaceful protests sparked by the continued violence against people of color. These riots that have grown out of these protests is either a result of everything that's in the air, people being so stoved up and cooped up for so long, able to come out or for a cause, and, and as they wait long hours in the sun and as night falls, that, that peaceful protest turns to violence, or maybe, maybe it's been provoked by those who seek to delegitimize those seeking change. A, a lot, a lot has happened. And honestly, I, I, I don't know what to say. And in some ways, I, I don't think it's my place to say, but in others, I'm called to stand in a place like this, so maybe, maybe there is a place. But I just don't know what to say. I, I feel like we're in a, in a place where we've been far too often lately. And now, in, in the midst of a, a global pandemic... As tensions are high, anxiety is building, and still there are those who would much rather go on drawing lines and dodging responsibility. I know, I know that even now, maybe some of you watching this, there are folks who will say to people like me, now, now, now preacher, don't say anything because it's not, it's not a preacher's place to talk about these things. Just preach the Bible. Just teach the Bible. And I have to tell you, friends, I, I've been reading seriously, academically studying the Bible and preaching the Scriptures for a while now. And, and I have to tell you that I, I keep coming to the same conclusion over and over and over. That God is definitely on the side of the poor, the afflicted, the oppressed, and all of those who suffer injustice, especially those who suffer within a system stacked against them. And after all, I, when I think about this great calling of love that God has placed upon us, to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves, I, I can't help but think that the primary direction of love seems to be between those of power and those who are powerless. That's the direction of love that changes things, challenges things, shapes things into the images of God. Love that moves from those with power and privilege to those who are oppressed and worn down by a world knocked out of whack by that sin of all sins, selfishness. That's the kind of love that changes things. I mean, after all, it's not so much the, the desire for self-preservation that leads to acts of violence, hate, greed, and injustice. It's not acts of saying, I just want to, to stay alive. I just want to be who I am. I just want to live my life. It's not those kind of actions that lead to these terrible things. But rather, it's the desire for self-elevation. That thing within us that makes us think, yeah, yeah. 
I am a little bit better than somebody else. Maybe it's because of how hard I work. Maybe it's because of the degrees I hold. Maybe it's because of the money I have, the color of my skin, the place where I was born, the religion that I have. But that desire, sometimes small, of to elevate ourselves above someone else, that's what wreaks havoc on the world. And friends, I am as guilty of that as anyone. And so every day I, I pray and I continually ask forgiveness of my own desire to elevate myself. To pass someone on the street and think I'm better than that person. To be wounded by somebody and go, well, I'm much smarter than they ever will be. I ask for the strength to overcome the prejudice and fears that have been boiled into my bones by the waters of my upbringing. And I pray that I may listen more to the voices of those that cry out. And that I'll really listen. Not just looking for an angle, not just looking for an agenda, not wondering to myself, who's behind that? But to really listen from a place of love. But through it all, however, I pray that I may find the strength to live into the teachings of the Bible. Especially, maybe better still, the teachings of Christ. Most especially those words that in my Bible have been, the pages have been worn so many times. Of Christ's sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, where he says, You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, if that direction of love is just a lateral move to somebody in your family, in your house, in your community, in your socioeconomic class, in your race, in your nation, if that love just moves parallel, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's my prayer every day. That today, I learned, I learned to love in a bigger way, a little bit more. That I learned to love even those who hurt me a little bit more, that I learned to love even those who are different than me, better than me, worse than me, a little bit more. That every day I pray, Christ help me to be a little more perfect today. May we, friends, strive to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Perfect in love. Would you pray with me? God, with all that's going on in our cities, in our towns, in our country, in our world, Lord, we just ask for your strength and for your presence. Not only within ourselves, God, but within our communities, within our country, around this world, as we seek, Lord, to put hands and feet to the love we claim. Help us to be changed, O oh God, to, to realize Lord, that you are calling us to be agents of change. And Lord, even now, as we look forward to being together again in worship, prepare our hearts as we come together. Help us to be patient. 
Help us to be open. Help us, O oh God, to listen. Most of all, Lord, in each and every day, help us to pray. And when we don't have the words, help us to pray as you taught us to pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.